Bro, hey there. Uh, ha, ha. How are you? <laughs> you doing, uh, broskis? Bromigos, broskitos. How are you doing? Today I will show you how to play Honey Pie by Johnny Utah. This song was requested by all these people. Thank you all so much for your comments. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to play that song. I will uh, first show you how to play the chords, then I will explain the strumming pattern a bit. Then I will also talk a bit about the music composition choices that are made in this song. Nothing too weird, nothing too difficult. And then that will be it. I hope everything will be clear. Definitely check out my Instagram. You can sometimes vote over there which song I do next. So that's nice, I think. Because I kind of forgot the shout outs uh, to the donators in the la last two videos. I will do them now. <laughs> I'm sorry I forgot. But nevertheless, I want to give a huge thank you to Cameron, to Carl, to Affordable Mobile and to uh, Philip and to Edberg for donating to my PayPal. Thank you so much for your wonderful support in this way. And I also want to give a huge thank you to Jonathan and to Christian for becoming a patron on my Patreon page. Thank you so much for your support in this way as well. Now that's really everything I wanted to say. Now we can get into the song. Before we get into the song, I forgot to mention that I will also explain how to play some chords in a different way to maybe make the song a bit easier for yourself. I will explain that after I played the song. Where the song is just in standard tuning, there's no capo or anything like that, so we can go directly into the song. So as you could see, that's how to play the song. Nothing too weird going on, <laughs> uh, especially especially the rhythm, uh, the strumming pattern might be tricky. I will explain it in a bit more detail. I will do that now. First of all, the song repeats itself the whole time, the chord progression at least. I will talk about a bit about that later in the video. Now I will first show you a different way to play the minor 7 chords except for the F minor 7, F minor 7, this one is basically the easiest to play like that. But the C minor 7 and the C flat minor 7, or the B minor 7 I mean, and the B flat minor 7, you can play them a different way which might be a bit easier, you can also do it like this. So from the F minor 7, then you go to the C minor 7 like that, which is a bit a more fluent way to play the chord. So if it's too difficult to go quickly to this one from the F minor 7, it's nicer to maybe play the F minor 7 like this. So it's basically the same chord, it might sound a bit more fuller. Playing it like this is more a jazzy way, 
you can say to play it. By that I mean that a lot of jazz guitarists use this finger positioning a lot and that's a really huge generalization. Don't take that too seriously but it, it is a kind of jazz way to only play a couple of notes of a chord instead of the full chord. So you can try out what works best for you. I think he does it like this in the studio version. He might also be doing it like this. As you can hear, it basically sounds the same. Then now I will explain the strumming pattern, which is really the most difficult, I think, of this song. It will be difficult to explain, but we will try. <laughs> first of all, I will do it slowly, I think. The first chord is like that. That wasn't slow, but... So you might notice that there's a lot of fake hittings or like mute hittings, like... Where you hit the strings and don't produce any sound. But you can also hit it in the first chord, it goes like this. So, this is important. It adds a lot of rhythm and, yeah, rhythm to the song. Um, so, first a down stroke, then an up stroke, and then a mute hit. And to do that, I also explained this in the last video by either. Um, resting your left hand on the strings, so instead of placing them on the strings, resting them on them, so this is placing them on them, and this is, this is resting them, so it sounds like this, which you can do to mute hit the strings. You can also use your palm of your hand by uh, pa placing the palm of your hand on the strings immediately when you're hitting them, so like that. By that way you mute them, so you have to, it's not really a palm mute, that would sound like that, but it's more a mute. <laughs> so, like that. Uh, you can also do them both, so. I think I do that, I'm not too sure. <laughs> it goes really quickly, but. Yeah. That's the best way maybe to do it too. And use your palm to mute the strings, and use your left hand to mute the, st to mute the strings, so. Like that. To mute the strings, so like that. And then you go to Discord. First of all, when you do this, you can just hit them once, so, and then, or you can also add in these mute hits, like, and this one, by the way, you do the same thing that you did over here, so, like that, but you can add these, these mute hits also in between, you do that by I think that's really what I'm doing, so. And then really, then really quickly, so. Like that. It might go quick, I'll do it very slowly, and listen closely to the muted and the not muted string, so. Then when you're going back to the C minor 7 from. He does two different strummings on the C minor 7. He changes it. First, he does it like this. So, the same pattern as you hear. And here. So, nothing too weird. But the second time, each time he's playing this progression, he does, he does this. So, then it goes. Like that, which looks maybe difficult, and it might be, but I know you can do it. I will do it slowly so you can see what's going on. So, so you basically hit the strings a couple of times, and you do two mute hits. So, so. So to do that you do, I will do it slowly. So I will do the whole chord progression again, so you can see both ways that the C minor 7 are played.
like that. And you can also hear when I'm going from the C minor seven to the F minor seven. I'm also doing this. This you can just try to add in these muted strums whenever you can and like to. You can play around a bit with that, and it's also nice to do that to add a bit of variety to the chord progression. Uh, you can also even come up with your own way of playing the C minor seven. I also did that once in the chord pro in the cover I just did. So you can also do. Like that, you can just play around with that, especially the C minor seven at the end, because there you have the space to do that. But that's how to play the strumming pattern. I hope that was clear. Watch the song at the lower speed. You can change that in the settings. That might help as well. And for the last thing I wanted to say about the chord progression is that you can also do this hammer on on the F minor seven, which might sound nice. I'm not too sure if it does it, I don't think so, but you can add it in. I won't be mad at you and I don't think he will. So So It's a nice little extra thing that you can put in if you'd like. Now the only thing I wanted to talk about is that as you might notice, um the now the the theoretical or not so much theoretical but the interesting part of this song is that the chord progression repeats itself the whole time. Which might make you think it becomes boring, but it doesn't. And that's what's so nice about the song and about songs like that in general. That they create this chord progression that is so nice and so groovy that you can just keep on playing it and it won't get boring. Which is interesting because not a lot of chord progressions really can be used for that. The, I think you can make a chord progression that... That at a certain moment in the song people are like, okay, you can change it up now. But with this chord progression, it isn't like that. Because it's just a very groovy and rhythmic, rhythmical, rit rit rhythm-like uh, chord progression. Um, and also he changes up, he adds a bit of variety by changing the other instruments and changing, changing the, uh, of course, the lyrics and stuff. Um, and also by doing this thing that I just so showed you with the C minor 7. <laughs> It's like a small strumming difference that he does each time. That was really the thing I wanted to say about this. But it's just that what I really want to, to give you as a take home message. If you came up with a nice rhythm riff thing. Don't worry. Um, don't be afraid to use it a lot. I mean if it sounds nice you could use it the whole song. Because it sounds nice. But not every chord progression sounds nice to repeat itself the whole, whole time. But this one does. It might be different to... To tell which one does and which one doesn't. I also can't really tell you that. Other than it's a feeling thing. I think when you feel like. Oh this sounds really nice and groovy and melodic. I can use this the whole song. Then do it. If you don't want to then that's totally up to you. It's all up to you. But I just wanted to say that it's nice to try out. To create something that sounds so nice. That you can repeat it. Uh, a lot. Uh, because it sounds nice. The, I'm sorry this was so informative but I wanted to make this informative uh, and I hope it is still but yeah I still hope it's of use this information or this uh, opinion on this song but I think that's really everything I wanted to say about this song I really hope everything was clear thank you so much for watching so far and I really hope to see you next time <laughs>